Hello mountain bikers and welcome to your favorite gear show, right? Right. Well, as usual, we've got a tasty selection of news and reviews for you today with tools, apparel, protection and bikes on the menu. In fact, with so much to get through, this is no time to hang it out. Let's dive in. If you want a new YT capper, you better hit yt-industries.com right now and it may not matter anyway. But the new capper Mark III is here in carbon only for now and a water bottle fits. They made the front triangle asymmetrical for that bottle and tweaked geometry with a two degree steeper seat angle and one degree slacker head angle. Suspension has also been changed with specific kinematics for the dual 29er builds and the MX or mixed wheel builds. The limited edition launch model is $79.99 US. The most expensive YT ever? It has a Cane Creek Katsuma coil shock, those crazy Cane Creek titanium EE wings cranks, Crank Brothers synthesis wheels, a RockShox Zeb fork, and SRAM X01 Eagle drivetrain. It's also MX, mullet, whatever you want to call it, mixed wheel only. The launch has a Pinteresty pseudo patina worn paint finish, and there are only 100 being made available. Get on that one. For everyone else, there are Capra Core 3 and Core 4 builds offered in Dual 29 or MX. The Capra Core 4s have Fox factory suspension and SRAM X01 Eagle drivetrain for about six grand US, while the Core 3s have Fox Performance Elite squishy bits and a GX drivetrain for 4,500 US. They both run Crank Brothers synthesis wheel sets and are offered in five sizes total. Hit up our site for full spec, geometry charts, bike weights, and that weird launch video that had to have cost at least seven figures or more to create. Storing tools in the cockpit seems like a pretty straightforward thing, but there's a lot going on in this area of the bike, and a good old star nut has been getting in the way of progress here. One of Components Everyday Carry, or EDC system, has been around for a good few years already by now, and it's available in several different versions with different installation requirements. Tapping a thread in your steerer, using a preloader stem, or going with the EDC Lite version that uses a recessed star nut. Recently, 1UP has introduced the very latest EDC family member, a threadless carrier that preloads the headset from the bottom, which in turn allows it to make room for a slightly shortened version of the full EDC tool. The top part of the new carrier looks like the previous generations once installed, but it is a different beast altogether when it comes to how it works. The new carrier traverses the whole steerer tube and meets up with a plate and a bolt at the bottom. Several different length bolts are provided to make sure you can use the carrier with whatever length of steerer tube you happen to be running on your bike. Installing the threadless carrier is super easy. In fact, if you are building a bike from scratch, it's actually probably the easiest way to fit a new fork, as it does away with the requirement to tap in a star nut. Just slide the fork into place, install the threadless carrier and preload the stem. If you are installing it on a bike that already has a star nut, you'll need to remove that first. Once installed, using the tool is easy. Just slide it out of the carrier, bend the tool to free up the various parts, and get to it. 1UP has made a few modifications to the design of the EDC V2, like an improved chain breaker tool that now also features better spoke wrenches. The tool is also easier to slide in and out of the carrier, much like the EDC Lite, a welcome tweak as the first generation was kind of sticky in this regard. The multi-tool itself is of high quality, and the tool selection works well out on the trail. Are you the kind of person with $11,000 or more just kind of laying around to spend on a bike? Uh, if you are, do you want to share some with me? All right, well, if you do, the new Specialized Canevo SL is here. It's a 170 mil travel electric mountain bike based on the Specialized Enduro platform. Not because we're rich, but because we run a mountain bike website, we were able to test the Canevo SL. The weight of our test bike was 42 pounds or just over 19 kilograms, and it has six different riding positions thanks to multiple geometry adjustment options. The Canevo SL ripped, it slapped, and it practically did our grocery shopping for us thanks to the high-tech Mastermind TCU and Mission Control app. And same pricing aside, this is clearly the future of EMTB. Specialized is going all in on this light, tech-heavy direction. If 11 grand is a bit too much for you, you could custom build your own, starting with a frame set at just $8,500. Hit up our review video for more, and think about a second, third, fourth job. Whatever you can do to have enough disposable income to spend $11,000 on an e-bike. Royal's 2021 line just hit the shelves and we've taken delivery of some fresh new pieces that we wanted to share with you here today. We'll be putting this stuff to the test properly over the coming months, but here's a little taste for you already. 
There's a whole set of cool new colors, of course, but also some solid technical evolutions here. The Quantum line is the one to grab for all kinds of riding. With a new technical fabric and a great cut, the short has already impressed us after only a couple of rides. The core jerseys feel just like your favorite t-shirt, but they do a much better job of wicking away sweat and they dry out super quickly. Casual but tech, with a mostly low-key look, should make this one an easy choice if you're not into the whole motocross hand-me-down vibe. Last year, we tested the Armor Light back protector from Bluegrass with good results. Continuing their search for something even more comfortable and minimalistic, the company has just launched the new Seamless series. This protector relies on a large D3O pad in the back, housed in a stretchy chassis devoid of any kind of zippers. The pad sits in a dedicated compartment and can be removed when washing the garment itself, and there are two small pockets out back for storing essentials. The pockets are placed above the D3O pad to ensure that any content cannot harm you if you fall on that area. We tested the simpler model, but there is also a version with shoulder protection available. The main body of the protector is made from dry yarn microfiber, which is 30% lighter than traditional fabrics and offers a second skin kind of fit, very elastic and said to stay very stretchy for the life of the product. In action, the seamless light lived up to its name, offering very high amounts of comfort and breathability. In fact, this may well be the most comfortable back protector we've ever tried. The D3O pad features plenty of ventilation holes to help it breathe better, and it has been given some kind of soft coating on the inside, which makes it more agreeable when drenched in sweat. We know from previous experience that uncoated D3O directly on the skin can end up feeling a bit weird when things get really hot. The fabrics are very soft to the touch and the cut is good. We like that Bluegrass added some length to the main garment body. The Armour Light we tested last year was a bit short in the waist area which could feel weird on the trail. The longer body also makes it more stable and less prone to moving around in a crash. The seamless light protector is not cheap, but if you're after something extremely comfortable that can be worn all day, while still offering CE certified levels of protection across a broad area of your back, it's well worthy of consideration. Few things can be as annoying and heartbreaking as putting a scratch in your fork stanchions. Not to mention, it can be an expensive fix. French company Sendit has a solution in the form of their scratch cover kit. The kit consists of epoxy resin, a file, applicator, alcohol wipes, fine grain sandpaper and polishing paste. If you surf, you might already own one of these kits, as it's very similar to what's used to repair surfboards, although Sendit says their epoxy is particularly well suited to the rigors of the life of a fork stanchion. Start by cleaning up any metal edges around the scratch, using the included file if necessary, clean the surface thoroughly, then mix the epoxy resin. It's important to respect the quantities and to be thorough when mixing, otherwise the resin may not be uniform after application. Cover the scratches with the resin mix, enough so that the excess forms a convex shape over the scratch. Let the resin harden overnight, then work it smooth with the supplied fine grain sandpaper. The sandpaper will not harm the stanchion finish, but it will get rid of excess resin with a few minutes of effort. Finish it all off with the supplied polishing paste and you're good to go. The result is surprisingly good. The scratches we tested on here were quite small and not very deep, and we questioned whether there would be enough surface for the epoxy to fill and adhere to. The answer is yes. This fork stanchion feels 98% smooth to the touch now, to the point that it would be hard to find the repair with your eyes closed. Next time you scratch your fork, give the scented scratch cover a try. Chances are you'll be able to avoid having to swap out your CSU and stanchion assembly. Definitely worth the 40 euros. Niner has been on a tear lately, launching their updated long travel WFO a couple weeks ago, and now dropping the updated Jet 9 RDO, which is a 120 mil travel trail ripper. The full carbon frame uses Niner's CVA suspension platform and features a lifetime warranty. In high mode, head angle is 66.5 degrees, seat angle is 76, chain stays run 430 mils, and there's a flip chip to customize the ride and drop the head angle to 66 degrees. Reaches are 450 mils for a medium, 475 on a large. There are sizes small, medium, large, and XL available. See more details, get our ride report, and learn more about model pricing and spec on VitalMTB.com. In the lightweight knee protection category, we've always thought highly of Liat's Airflex Pro. The Pro has recently been joined in the lineup by the all-new Airflex Hybrid, an even lighter and more streamlined protector. This new protector is built around a knitted sleeve with an integrated gel pad and two external hard shell cups. The overall length of the protector has grown quite a bit, 
while there are no dedicated auxiliary pads along the sides. The rear of the protector uses the same moisture cool fabric as the Airflex Pro. There is a large open section around the back of the knee for ventilation and comfort, and the same elastic strip as found on the Airflex Pro sits around the back of the knee joint at the top of the cuff to help hold the protector in place. There is also a mix of silicon strips and little triangle shaped grippers all around the top hem. The Airflex Hybrid is well put together and the branding is fairly discreet. In action, the hybrid is impressively stable. The fit seems to be just right, tight enough to really ensure that the protector stays in place, but never restrictive or uncomfortable. I managed to take a pretty serious tumble, full over the bars, while testing these, and the protector did a fine job of warding off a direct impact to the knee. Continuing the comparisons with the Airflex Pro, it seems that the hybrid may be more effective on straight direct hits, thanks to the extra hard shell caps, while coming up short with regards to dedicated lateral protection. Yeah, it's a bit pricey, but if you're after a super comfortable knee protector that knows how to really make itself forgotten until called upon, you should certainly consider it. Alright then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails.